Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss the next tool, which is the gradient tool. The tool here after the text tool is the gradient tool. You can also use the shortcut key G. Gradient tool is used to create and edit gradients. Gradients are smooth transitions between two or more colors. To apply a gradient to an object, first select the object then click and drag over the object to create a gradient. Inkscape offers two types of gradients, linear gradient and radial gradient. By default, when you create a gradient, it creates a linear gradient with black color at the start end and fully transparent where you end the gradient. For example, for this rectangle, click and hold where you want the black color to start, then drag to where you want it to be fully transparent, and then release it. This will be the resulting gradient. You can control the gradient as needed. You can make it inside an object, outside the object, and draw horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, hence in any direction you like. If you don't like the gradient result, you can either draw it again or you can adjust it by editing its nodes. A linear gradient has two nodes. The square node indicates the starting point of the gradient and this circle node is for the end of the gradient. Click and drag the node to edit the gradient. You can also use a node tool to move these nodes, like this. In gradients, these nodes are also called stops. Now, let's discuss how to change the colors of the gradient. For this, select the node, and choose any color from below. You can also select any new color or change the opacity here from the Fill and Strokes tab. By default, the Gradient tool creates a linear gradient with two colors. You can also add multiple colors in Gradient. For this, you have to create new nodes or stops on the gradient line. To do so, double-click on the gradient line and it will add a new stop on it. You can add as many stops as you want, like this, and can edit and change their color like other stops. Let's discuss some key combinations with nodes of gradient. If you drag the node with the control key, it will move it by snap angle. By default, snap angle value is 15 degrees, but it can be changed from preferences. Holding Ctrl and Alt keys will preserve the angle, and the node will move forward or backward in that angle, like this. Holding the Ctrl and Shift keys will scale the gradient line from the center, like this. Now, let's discuss different options for the gradient tool. The first option which is by default selected is for linear gradient. Select this option if you want to create a linear gradient. The next option is for the radial gradient. Select this to create a radial gradient, like this. Now, you can see that the radial gradient has two gradient lines with three nodes. Moving this square node moves the whole gradient. Moving the other two handles stretches and squeezes the gradient shape, and moving these can also rotate the gradient like this. Now, like linear gradient, you can change the color by selecting the node. The square node which is the center node will change the start of the gradient, and the remaining two circle handles will change the end of the gradient. You can select any node to apply changes. Similarly, you can add or delete nodes using the same method as we did in linear gradient. The next two options tell where the gradient will be applied. This option, which is by default selected states that gradient will be applied on objects fill. This option will apply the gradient on the object's stroke, like in these examples. Next is the Select drop-down. This drop-down contains the list of all gradients we have used in this document. It allows us to use any previously created gradient on any other object from this list. For this, select the object first, then choose the desired gradient to apply on it, like this. The next option with a lock icon is very useful. If you select any gradient from the list and change any of its colors, then Inkscape will make it a new gradient. It will not affect the objects with that gradient. But if you want to make changes to a particular gradient, 
and you want that it should be applied to all those objects that have this gradient, then first select it from the list, and then lock it by clicking this lock icon. By default, it is unlocked, but after clicking it, it will become locked. Now, if you make changes to this gradient, it will be changed for all objects with the same gradient, like this. This helps you to make changes to a particular gradient used by many objects easily, instead of editing each object separately, which is very annoying and time-consuming. Right after the lock switch, this is the reverse gradient option. It reverses the gradient of the selected objects. For example, if I select this object and click the reverse gradient icon, then you can see gradient colors are reversed. The start color has become the end color, and the end color has become the start color. Similarly, for multiple color gradients, the order of colors will be flipped. Like this. Next is the repeat dropdown. It controls what happens before the first stop and after the last stop in the gradient. It offers three options. None, which is by default selected, extends the color of the start and the stop end infinitely, like in this example. In reflected, the gradient mirrors itself at the ends by creating a repeating infinite smooth gradient. In direct, the gradient restarts itself at each end and makes a repeated pattern without smooth transitions, like in this example. The next two options are related to each other. The first dropdown is for stops. It gives you a list of all nodes or stops of the selected object's gradient and their respective colors. This allows another way to select the stops in a gradient, instead of selecting them on a gradient line, like this. Next is offset. It defines the distance of each node or stop from the start node. Its value ranges from 0 to 1.00. 0 is for the start, and 1 is for the end stop. You can manually adjust the position of any node as per requirement. The last two options are for adding and subtracting stops from the gradient. This is for adding stops, and this is for subtracting stops. Selecting one or more stops activates these options. If you select one stop, let's say this one in this example, then clicking Add Stop option here will add a stop between this and this node, like this. If I select these two, using shift, and then add a stop, then it will be added between these two, like this. And if you select three nodes, and then click add stop, then two stops, one between these, and one between these will be added, like this. You can also add the stop by double-clicking on the gradient line, as we discussed before in this tutorial. To subtract any stop, just select it, and click this, and it will be deleted from the gradient. For multiple stop subtraction, select them using the shift key and click the subtract option to delete them. You can also use the delete key to delete the selected stop, like this. All these options of gradient tool that we have discussed are also available in the fill and strokes tab. We will discuss them later in their tutorial, so stay tuned. For now, that was all about the gradient tool and its different options. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comment section or contact us on our website or social media, their links are in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.